Hi, Jasper Mortier. I'm struggling with uh, uh, extra noises on my vintage bass bridges. Uh, I'm starting to get a clue where it's coming from. Uh, it first started on my... Um, where do I have it? Oh, here. Uh, I'm talking about mainly my uh, 50, uh, 65P bass. And these are the original saddles on, the, on this. Uh, they're not only rusty, but for some reason the, um, the screws are not parallel. I saw pictures of uh, the same year P bases online and they looked exactly like this. So maybe this was like a, an attempt to put press side pressure, inward pressure, so like this, on the saddles to keep them together or something, I don't know. But I always have... Um, uh, sitar kind of uh, of noises with the strings going over the fretted bridge. Those, yeah, just like a sitar actually, exactly, exactly uh, sound like that. And number two is that I have touching noises like a, a ticky ticky. I'll I'll show you because I have recordings of it. Just acoustically mainly. It's acoustically annoying since I'm at home. I'm not playing during uh, due to the stupid COVID virus uh, this is starting to get annoying but the sitar noises were bothering me all the time then I I pushed the strings downward a little to get more uh, pressure over get the, the angle better and then it sometimes was gone but the next day it was back again maybe it's because of the rusty stuff I even cleaned them but it doesn't matter actually I think because the screws are not parallel, the slots are not parallel either, so the, the string is string is not totally parallel to the slot or whatever. Um, I had a friendly bass builder who hates bass parts made by Fender because they're so light and cheap, and he's totally right, but they do have character. And I so I got my um, these are the uh, the saddles I have on there now. And um, he told me it's late 60s bridge, so that's late 60s saddle. So they uh, changed the setup a little. You, don't, you see the screws are totally par parallel now. Um, and I don't have sitar noises anymore, so I'm really happy. And they look exactly uh, like the saddles on my uh, 66 uh, jazz bass. So I guess they made those uh, for like uh, two years or something because also the older ones don't have those. And the screws are really rusty, so maybe it's just cheap metal. I don't know what it is, but they just drive me crazy. So I'm happy I found those, but then still I had those touching noises. Um, uh, I experimented with uh, the Goto, I have to look, Goto 203B. Uh, nickel, by the way, and that's I installed it now on another base. It looks really nice, like this. Um, noises work, and they have uh, they have slots for the G and the. Oh, I can't see that, but I can look it online. They have slots for the the G string and the E string, so it prevents the saddles from moving. The, there's a bit heavier one, I don't know, this is the 201, I think, and it has slots for all the saddles. The Dose, this one has only slots for the outer ones. I bought it because it looks pretty like an original uh, original one. And it looks, uh, looks nice. Um, but I lost, sorry, <clears throat> I lost character. Uh, it's, it's not a heavy mass bridge, it's pretty light, it's a bit heavier than the, than the cheap uh, light fender bridges. But uh, I lost my main character, it just sounds more like a modern bass, and I didn't like that. So I experimented also with, uh, where do I have it? Uh, I have the package somewhere, I'll get it, signals. But the uh, old parts. It's cheap, 18 bucks or something. Oh, uh, to the left. <laughs> you see it? You need the Allen wrench to uh, adjust them. Uh, I tried those and I, I made it, I made a short clip so you can hear the any if there's any difference between the late 60s 
fretted model and the old part one. I don't have recordings of my bass with the with the Goto bridge, but you have to take my word for it. So the late 60s saddles are on here now. And especially on the D string, uh, G string, I hear this uh, nasty ticky. That's this hollow ticky sound. Okay, but uh, acoustically. With the eye. So the all parts saddles are on there now. Now first do it acoustically. Those touching noises are still a little bit there, but not too bad. And it's pretty even over the strings, so that's okay. So even acoustically, I merely hear a uh, character shift, so it's almost like a high mass bridge, but somewhere in between a high, high mass bridge and the old school bridge, which makes sense. Um, and I miss my basic character of my uh, my old P bass. Uh, it's not super severe, but it's uh, it's there. Uh, I think I like the Goto saddles a bit better. But that's not gonna be. That's not a big difference, I think. Although I cannot show them to you now. Uh, I'll play it through the DI. Okay, So with the uh, newer saddles, the old parts saddles and the Goto saddles, uh, I hear character change and I I think that's to be expected. You got maybe a little more, more low end or sub lows and more high end and less mids. And I'm really after a warm lows and not per se super tight deep lows and really needs the character of the mids. So uh, I miss it so subtle, but I do miss uh, the the mid character when I uh, and I also hear it back in the 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 eye recording it's not super strong but I do hear a loss of character and if you do it day by day then you really start to miss it when you're thinking something fundamental is missing from your bass so I'm back to the uh, original uh, setup at least with the uh, 60s uh, saddles on there so it's this ticky noises I'm talking about. Chick, chick, chick. Chick, chick, chick. Sounds like almost a basis microphonic, but idiot because nothing is connected, especially D, D and G string. That just drives me nuts. Chick, 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 and I. Always add some body grease. Uh, yeah. So, but this is with with all parts saddles, so that didn't work out with the more modern saddles. So I adjusted uh, something. I put uh, a G string two slots 
uh, to the outside so the string pulls the the saddles towards each other a bit so if you put the G string in the down direction it, it pulls the saddle up so they touch each other uh, more strongly so there's now no gap between the D and G string saddle uh, and the sound's gone so maybe it's just got to do with uh, tension on the saddles uh, so maybe that's the reason of the different frets so you can uh, make the, spring, the string spacing a bit wider uh, resulting in a tension on the saddles in the inward direction if you know what I mean uh, that's why I guess uh, Leo Fender invented the, the bass bridge for the Stingray with the the pole, the poles next to the saddles, so that the saddles go nowhere, or those new bridges that have slots in the in the in the in the base of the in the base plate of the bridge, so they are stuck. But then still, maybe you just need tension. So I think I, I did it with tie wraps on this base before too. I reinvent, rediscovering the stuff constantly. So you need tension. Uh, inward so like you maybe you can even use a clam or something to put them together uh, but now the ticky noises are gone yeah totally weird so you get a bit more string spacing but with tension on the saddles and the good old vintage tone So the conclusion is um, avoid uh, mid-60s uh, bridges, but you have a beautiful bass. And, um, but with this bridge, maybe you can get the replacement bridges you can get now all, uh, everywhere. You even got nice, um, uh, nice relic ones that look really gorgeous and hopefully they, don't, they sound the same. Uh, the modern stuff like the old part, uh, and the Goto, uh, not only the total bridge, but also the, already the pole pieces, I think, uh, pole pieces, the saddles, already change the character of your of your vintage instrument. And that's up to you. There's a lot of people who like uh, heavy bridges, so that changes the character even more. I don't like it. I like the open, airy sound. Maybe you listen, you, you miss some sustain, but I it's warm, it's deep, still, fundamental, and... Um, so I like the I like the old school bridges. I don't like those my uh, my uh, 665 bridge with the sitar noises. I can get rid of the touching noises by make sure you get side pressure. So make string spacing a bit wider. That's what I showed you. So you avoid the um, avoid the ticky noise if you ever have that problem. It's maybe I'm the only one. Okay, so I'm back to my late 60s bridge and I'm. Uh, I'm happy I sorted it out. Ciao.